Hey, what's going on everyone? How you guys doing today? My name is Matt Jarbo. This is Three Buck Theater and you know, I'm a big fan of Black Mirror. I have been now for many, many, many years and I always love his take on the dystopian aspects of modern society. I kind of uh, very much equate it to the original Twilight Zone and the Outer Limits, probably more on the Outer Limits side of things but something that always felt like it was telling stories on the edge of society or where we could potentially go at some point in time. And I've been looking forward to season six and getting that announcement for season six, but apparently that's not gonna be happening here because according to Charlie Brooker, uh, he doesn't know what kind of stomach there would be for stories about society falling apart right now. And I, I just, I have to say, there's a lot. There's a lot of stories that people wanna hear about right now. Uh, that would make about society falling apart because guess what? Uh, it's actually cathartic. And I'll talk about that here in a second. So Charlie Brooker has said that he's not sure if audiences could stomach another season of Black Mirror. In an interview with the Radio Times, Brooker suggested that the public mood doesn't suit another season of this dystopian anthology series, saying, I've been busy doing other things. I don't know what I can say about what I'm doing and not doing. At the moment, I don't know what stomach there would be for stories about societies falling apart, so I'm not working away on one of those. I'm sort of keen to revisit my comic skill set, so I've been writing scripts aimed at making myself laugh. And that's great. I mean, you can't you can't live that long in the darkness without making yourself with without needing to find a way to make yourself laugh and to kind of come out of it. And I think that same mindset applies itself to the fans of uh, Black Mirror. And I say that because when this whole COVID-19 thing kicked off, when this whole Bud Light virus thing happened, one of the things that came out was the fact that the movie, uh, uh, was it Contagion? The 2011 Steven Soderbergh film about a viral outbreak in America and how it destroyed society and killed so many people was number one on the rental charts on iTunes. And the thing is, it wasn't on Netflix or anywhere else you could stream it, but people were buying the hell out of it or renting the hell out of it because at that point in time, they very much wanted to see it. They wanted to, to look at something that would speak to them about where things are on through more of an entertainment lens and they found it to be somewhat cathartic. And I think they did that because at the end of the day, maybe they solved it at the end of the movie. Maybe that's why Outbreak was doing well on Netflix for a while because people just wanted to look up something in regards to it. But right now, I don't think people would be freaking out about the type of crazier stories that could come out of Charlie Brooker in regards to another season of Black Mirror. In fact, if I were Charlie Brooker, I would look at it to go more nihilistic, more cynical, and show us the absolute craziest angle he could think of, really dig deep into that barrel of depravity, because I think that would be cathartic for people. And I know that sounds weird to say, but hear me out. I say that because people like to see the extremes of something in order to remember and remind themselves that they don't actually live in that world. Yes, it's crazy out there right now. Yes, it's freaky out there right now, but it's not the end of the world. We will get through this, we will survive, so on and so forth. And when you watch something as bleak as Black Mirror, it can offer some form of catharsis, not to everybody, obviously. Maybe I'm just that kind of weird, cynical bastard. But you know, you look at the ones um, like White Bear, and, and White Bear was just, it was just so cynical in my mind uh, that maybe at the time I watched it, I didn't really care for it. I do like the episode, but it wasn't my overall favorite. But now going back and rewatching it, I could look at it from being like, oh, wow, okay, maybe approach it a little bit differently. Like the world this woman lives in is of her own making. Uh, I don't live in that world. That kind of fear isn't something I have to deal with. And that kind of existential dread isn't something there that I have to partake in. And then I can just enjoy the story. I actually think that right now would be a great time for these sort of stories. Um, I know that sounds so weird to say, and probably no studio out there wants to touch a viral outbreak movie for at least the next you know, 15 years. And I'm not saying that to be insensitive or saying this to, to be, to, to take, you know, uh, to, to make light of what's happened. But again, if he were to tell a story about a contagion, about a viral outbreak that was done through a way 
uh, a lens of giving us, I don't want to say a happy ending, but an understandable ending, I think people then would find uh, enjoyment in that. If it was just like, you know, bleak end of the world, we're all going to die nihilism, maybe that's going a tad too far. You still have to you still have to kind of write ratchet things to a certain positive spin towards the end. And maybe that's why contagion has been so well received. Uh, maybe that's why outbreak has been so, you know, well received going back to it. It's one of those things that I think could be interesting to talk about, but, uh, no, I, I, I don't, I think people's stomachs would be just fine. I think, I think a lot of people are adults and they can handle these kind of stories. I think a lot of people would like to see something that takes them out of this particular environment and puts them into some other world that could be falling apart. That's not this specific one. I mean, if you recall, there was a real big uh, push for like monster movies during the cold, you know, the, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And I think a lot of that had to do with the escapism factor of it. I mean, during the Great Depression, King Kong was made as a way to kind of help people through the Great Depression. It was a movie, you know, about a monster coming to New York and causing havoc and chaos. And people flocked to the theater to go see it because it was something that was different. Even though if you go back and you watch the original King Kong movie, it's not a lighthearted romp. It's not. It's portrayed as this monster movie. It's very serious in its approach and serious in its execution. And it's one of the greatest films of all time, in my opinion. So, no, people have no problem during these darker days to watch darker content. I think it does give them perspective more so than watching things that are sunshine, rainbows and BJs. So I think that in this particular case, Charlie Brooker could give us something, you know, that could be pretty well, pretty well done. Uh, <laughs> I know it's a weird take to have, I fully admit, but I'm curious to know what you guys have to say about this. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. I'm curious to hear your thoughts and your opinions. Am I right? Am I wrong? I want to hear them. Uh, be sure to please thumbs up the video, subscribe, all that jazz. I'll talk to you all later. Have yourself a great day. Thank you again for watching and peace out.